Spanish women, they're raised to, to be a wife. But why isn't a black woman raised that Most way? black women are raised to be independent. Remember, remember, let's be real. Say that again. Most black women are raised, are raised to be strong, mm -hmm. tough, independent, and don't take no shit. If the daddy wasn't shit, I'll raise you alone by myself, be a strong black woman. Mm -hmm. So they come into the game with their guard up yes. ready. The Spanish girl is raised to serve. Yeah. They be cooking for their father at a young age, washing the dishes, washing the table, mopping all Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. Let's face it, they're raised to serve. If one time I had, I swear to God, I'm at a girl's house having dinner. I got out with my own plate, put it in the garbage, put it in the sink, her mom spaz on her. In Spanish, about da 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 Now, in the black woman's house, if I get up with my own plate, she gonna say, that's a damn good nigga. He got his own shit. I like him, Shirley. I actually agree to a certain degree about what he is saying, but it is what he is not saying and is intentionally leaving out that I will address in this video. Are many black girls raised to be tough, strong, independent, and don't take no mess? Yes, absolutely. Many are. However, I would pose the question, are black boys raised to be husbands? Are black boys raised to be providers? Are black boys raised to be protectors? Well, if you are having a hard time answering the questions, let me help you out. It is no secret that most black boys are overwhelmingly raised and encouraged to be ball players, rappers, and are entertainers. It is why people like Dr. Umar contend that there are too many black boys going into those fields. For example, the percentage of black male wealth in America that is locked into sports and entertainment is something like 95 percent, which means that important fields that build group independence, group stability and group wealth are not being invested in and will therefore continue to feed the cycle of black men having to rely on the white man's system for his livelihood. So what good does it do to raise wives for a group of men, many of which are raised to be everything else but a husband? The boys are told to sow their, ro sow their royal oats before settling down or to be a bachelor as long as they can, but never, and I mean never, are they told to train for husbandhood or fatherhood because usually something like that don't they don't prepare for but are thrown into after irresponsibly having unprotected sex with a girl or woman that they never intended on wifing. In Tennessee has 30 children with 11 different women, and he is 33 years old. Now, according to CNN affiliate WREG, he is now begging the state to help him, help him pay his child support. I want to bring back in Sunny Haas, and she's on the case with us as always. And Sunny, I... I <laughs> I know, I know. Um, I, I know some of the moms are only getting a couple of dollars a month for child support in and of itself. Do you actually think the state is going to say, okay, buddy? Hence the man in the video who didn't say that he married the Spanish wife raised woman because of her wifey attributes and upbringing because truth be told, he probably pumped and dumped her or made her into a baby mama because the end goal was never to get married and become a husband in the first place. It's the same results that many black women get without being raised to be wives. Notice that there are no husband schools or husband classes selling at all or in the equivalent as the feminine or wife classes in schools, but I digress. Such things as agriculture, banking, military, natural resources, and real estate barely have any black male presence in them, if any at all. Think about some of the wealthiest black men in America and ponder on how all of them made their wealth in the path that they all had to take to get to their billion dollar status. Look at Jay-Z, Kanye West, Michael Jordan, Tyler Perry, and even Bill Cosby when he was at million dollar status. But the list goes on and on. All of these men took the path within one of three realms, ball player, rapper, entertainer. Don't get me wrong, there is nothing wrong with choosing the path of sports, music, or entertainment, but when you hear so many black men crying about whether or not black women are raised to be wives in a system that they themselves say the white man has full control over, therefore having full control of the black man's destiny, they seem to forget that their counterparts, which are black women and girls, 
are also under the same so-called white man system. But when black boys and men do not reach their potential in the quest of manhood, husbandhood or building, the white man is to blame. And when it comes to black women, well, black women can never and I mean never blame the white man and can only blame themselves because the white man's excuse is only reserved for black men to be used. Years of observation, right? I've come to the conclusion that sports are destroying our young black brothers, making them delusional, depressed and hopeless. Um, I've seen this trend where you have a lot of teenagers who are not even on the team, but they have this idea that they're going to college or going to go to the league. I see a lot of young men who are in 25, they're 25 to 30 years old, still saying they're trying to get to the league. Um, during this period now, they're not developing any skills to provide for themselves or, so or society. Also, uh, which you know about parents living through their child, which mm -hmm. contributes to it. And uh, which I know you're going to talk on the amount of attention given to athletes. What are your views about the relationship with sports in the black community? I think that sports are overemphasized in the black community. And I think this ties into a legacy coming from slavery where black men and black women were there. Our worth was determined on our physical attributes. And to a large extent, it's still the same way now. If you are an athlete, the way in which your worth is determined is identical to the way in which the worth of an enslaved African was determined. It was your output, your strength, how fast you could work. You look at the NFL combine, you look at the NBA workouts, it's nothing but a slave plantation. The only difference is you're being paid money. But the power differential between a slave and a slave master and the power differential between the NBA player and the NBA owner or the NFL player and the NFL owner is the exact same as the power differential between a slave and his master. The only difference is they are given money that allows them to live a comfortable life outside of the plantation. But beyond that, it is the same thing as slavery. They don't have no voice. They're afraid. They're timid. Their behavior is strictly controlled. It is slavery. And the only reason why we don't see professional sports as slavery is because the amount of money that they make. And that's because we equate money with power. Money is not power. Money buys you access. Power gives you the ability to control outcomes. These athletes do not control outcomes and most of them don't even control their own lives. I also think that we have to look at the fact that the black community overvalues sports and athletics and we undervalue academic excellence. The child who gets straight A's and B's, the child who's mentally gifted, the child who aced his SATs, the child who's in the top 1% smartest children you know, best reading scores, math scores, science scores, language scores, they will never get the attention of the basketball standout, even if he's an academic failure. They will never get the attention of a football standout, even if he's an academic failure. He could be failing three classes and he's still gonna get a big trophy at the end of the year for helping them go to the playoffs or win the playoffs. He may have no future after he leaves that school that year, but because he won the championship, got us a trophy, we're gonna put him on a pedestal. But the kid who's likely to come up with a cure for cancer, sitting right in this classroom, is not even going to be mentioned. After all, in the year of 2023, it is still the white man's fault that black boys are not raised, are overwhelmingly encouraged to be scientists, astronauts, and physicists, etc. And just like most black boys are not raised or encouraged to be any of those things, they are also not raised or encouraged to be good husbands, providers, or community builders. I have to admit that it was hard for me to say much of that, being that I went to an HBCU and not only know many black men who did well and are also husbands with great careers, but I can also acknowledge that my little HBCU is not the overall representation of the black male community. I got my son's up early. I got that up early. Yeah, all my nephews, ask any one of my nephews or any one of my, ask any one of my nephews or my son who got them they first head. Big dog. Yeah, ask any of my nephews who got them they first head. Big dog. Hey, I been got my son up. My nine-year-old, ten-year-old, I showed all of them how to put on rubber. Before you even start having sex, I didn't show my sons how to put on rubber.
Ain't finna get my son no more out here. Real. I'm training them boys right. I'm training them boys right. Ask in them my 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 nephew. Ask in them. Ask my son. Yeah. They were 12, 13. They got hit. Yeah. That's how it's supposed to be. Now, with all of that said, if black boys are not being raised to be husbands and are not encouraged to marry their first love or their first high school sweetheart like their black girl counterparts are encouraged to do, what sense does it make to raise a bunch of wives for a group of men who were not raised to be husbands? But more importantly, let's talk about what factors into why many black girls are raised to be strong, tough, independent, and don't take no mess. Could it have anything to do with the fact that many of these girls come from the same neighborhoods that these boys come from, their counterparts? Could it have anything to do with the fact that many of these girls face the same issues that the, that the black boys, their counterparts face coming from those same areas in those same neighborhoods? Could it have anything to do with you know, the socialization of black girls, right? Some of the same socialization that the black boys are socialized to do. But see, the thing about it is when it comes to, you know, the black boy that came from the hood, you know, the same unsafe, dangerous and potentially violent neighborhoods, just like the basketball player or the football player or the rapper who gets all the empathy in the world when he tells his I made it out story about how he had to navigate through some of the same traumatic experiences that his black girl counterparts had to navigate through. But see, he gets all the understanding, all the empathy and a hundred second chances. But when the girl, the young girl, the black girl counterpart came from the same neighborhood came from the same traumatic experience, they don't get any understanding, any empathy, any compassion, or a hundred second chances. The truth of the matter is that boys are raised to be bachelors until they have no choice. Even when they are married, they are encouraged to continue to be a bachelor. And because, you know, men will be men. While black girls are told to be patient hold them down, stick beside them, and even put up with the side chicks and side babies. Or, you know, until one day they wake up 5, 10, 15 years later after, you know, 3, 2, 4, 5 children, the man decides to marry them. In conclusion, black women are told that even when they come from the same neighborhoods, the same traumatic experience in the same overall circumstances that they are still supposed to be raised as soft, feminine, friendly wives who wait on their man to get his life together no matter how long it takes or how many side chicks or how many side babies or how many side men later, black women are told to be patient and to just wait. Black women are also told that they should accept any man with potential who tried who tried to be a good man, who tried, who was trying to be a good father, or who tried to be a good father, who was trying or tried to be a good provider, who was trying or tried to be a good protector. Notice I'm saying trying, not they are. All right. Notice how I'm saying trying. All right. Even though they have not seemed to come up with a way to form a united union of black men who can protect themselves against race soldiers who are taking them out left and right and are, are the next black man who is also taking them out left and right, even more so than the race soldiers. Black women are to wait, are to be understanding, are to, you know, hold them down until they get it together because black women are still supposed to find a way out of no way. Black women are still supposed to find a way to be feminine fr and friendly wives that no group of women on planet Earth has ever been able to do under the same direct circumstances that black women and girls are under. But hey, find a way, black women, find a way. That's all I have. Thank you guys for tuning in. Please come back for more content. Please like and also comment. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you guys for tuning in. Bye.